Today I'm putting new brake pads on the bounder front and rear and some uh, tire valve extensions and little uh, sensors, tire tire pressure monitor, monitor during, <laughs> can't say that this morning, tire pressure monitoring system. I probably don't even need brake pads yet, but to put the system on, uh, the tire valve extensions and the uh, and the cap for the inner tire, you know, I have to have I have to take them off anyway. At least the front one, the uh, outside tire, the inside tire. Well, once the lug nuts are loose, it's loose anyway. I might as well take it off, have a look at the brakes, and really, while it's down this far, um, I'm just gonna put fresh pads on it. Uh, the pads that the pads that are on it now are still pretty healthy. But for all the more they cost, while it's apart, I would rather do it here while I'm at the garage and uh, not find out while I'm out across the country somewhere that, you know, they're getting thin and squealing and uh, needing done out there and, you know, paying the labor uh, for somebody else to do it. So uh, I bought the better pads. Yeah, consistent stopping power for heavy vehicles and payloads. Uh, the bounder is certainly that engineered for thermal stability to reduce brake fade with frequent stops and uh, they have burnish strips for a quick pad to rotor brake it and yeah i've never seen pads like this that have a, um, actually this like anti-squeak whatever uh material on the back or whatever that's called uh it's actually like a weird material instead of uh little metal shim ones that were in the last ones so yeah i don't know and i've never seen the red stripe uh, before but these are uh yeah these are the severe duty ones so we're putting a set of those on it yeah here's the other ones here's the other ones all uh i guess the inner of the piston side one has this small plate and the bigger the bigger other one had you know they had like a metal plate where is it where is it oops on it that just clips on and uh, these brakes look like they've gotten, well, to tell the truth, I have gotten the brakes hot once. Uh, it was just a situation where, uh, you know, it's just a situation that the road had, was, uh, had a steeper downgrade where we was going that I, that I anticipated. And it was quite a mountain. And, you know, the brakes did get hot, you know, pretty hot one time. So, you know, anyway, I, I still wanted to. I'm glad they'd be going through here and inspecting everything that the rotors, you know, aren't heat cracked or, or anything like that, or the calipers got overheated where the uh, rubber seals uh, are actually burned up and that <laughs> are melted. And that's the way the, the brakes were when I first bought uh, the bounder. And, you know, I mean, I knew it needed uh, new brakes when I got it. So uh, yeah, they were shot. So it does have new calipers and, you know, other hardware because of that. Uh, that was uh, about three years ago. And everything so far, uh, it looks like it's holding up really well. Uh, I did the fronts yesterday. And uh, then the, the, the clouds started moving in and rain came. So the fronts are already done. And today, yeah, looking at that sky. Yeah, I'll be good. It's supposed to be nice all day. And uh, it's early. I'll have these done well before lunchtime. Yeah, and here are those uh, extensions. Uh, I, put, I set two of them aside. These are, they actually came in a pack of four, but I only need for the uh, for the inners, uh, the inner dual wheels. So these will reach out and easier to put air in them. And the tire pressure monitoring system. Uh, we'll get to that here in a minute. I have to go over and get those. And these brakes are incredibly easy to do. Uh, I mean, at least just putting fresh pads on them. These rotors still look really good. You know the front and in, or the outside and the inside surface these are still really nice uh let me see and the only thing that holds this caliper on is where is it where is it is this little slide that goes in and then a single bolt holds that uh from sliding in or out once it's slid into uh yeah you know the caliper goes on then you know this piece goes in you tap it in and that locks it in place and then this one bolt, that single bolt keeps that from sliding in or out. So yeah, take that one bolt out, tap this thing out. This whole thing just lifts, lifts off of here and uh, that's it. The uh, new brake pads, pretty easy here. This just sits in here. 
Actually, I'll need two hands to, it's a really um, kind of nice, neat fit. So, oh, no, it's in place. It's uh, that easy. And then the other one actually sits um, back in here. There's two, there's two uh, notches where this slides into place. And it should be right about, right about, and you can feel it easy. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There it is. There. So that's in place. I just put the rotor back on there, tap the thing in, put the bolt in it, and that's it. Put the uh, inside wheel on, put the extension on it, then I can put the uh, the outer wheel and tire on it and put the bolts all on it, and it's a done deal. I needed both hands to do that, but that's how the caliper sits on there. Uh, sits between you know, this piece and this lower piece, and yeah, the thing slides up here. Uh, the bolt goes in right over here. And, uh, that's about it. Here's that piece. I needed uh, both hands available, and uh, once that's it, so it took a little bit of doing to get it uh, started, but you know you got to tap that piece back in till that bolt hole looks centered in there. So we do have a little bit of step by step going on here, and it has a second hole because these are kind of universal. You know it's opposite on the other side, so the bolt would go. You know, so that's what's up with that. I'll put the bolt in there, and then that's that's locked in place. The caliper can't go anywhere. And the new pads are in it. And, uh, I'll get busy getting the wheels put back on it. All right, there the air compressor shut off. Yes, I'm using air tools to uh, uh, yeah take the lug nuts off to get the wheels off and then uh, and to put them back on. But then I have a torque wrench and uh, the bounder, at least this year bounder, uh, it has a particular torque specification on how tight to tighten the lug nuts, but. All right, that's we're good. And uh, for safety's sake, I do have the bounder uh, supported more than just that bottle jack. You know, the leveling jacks are down, uh, the front wheels are chalk, and uh, it's not going anywhere. And I have uh, these under here just in case. You know, while I'm under here working on it, and at no time do I actually get you know really under the bounder. Uh, maybe my arms a little bit to to work, but uh, you know, if something were to happen to fall, I mean, I'm not. I'm just always real careful not to uh, put any body parts where they could get, you know, pinched or smashed. Uh, but we're good. We're good. Of course, this is all. <clears throat> of course, this is always the fun part is wrestling these uh, the old wheels, tires back on here. I'm trying to get the lug nuts, getting the holes all lined up. There we go. Yeah, I made it look easy. I've, I've done this once or twice. <laughs> and uh, these, um, I don't know if they still use these or not. This is actually, this weird looking thing here is actually a, uh, a balancing thing. It has beads in it in this outside ring. It has beads in it. So, you know, it just kind of finds the light spotter heavy spotter you know as the tire gets up to speed they automatically kind of do their thing so all right now i gotta put a put one of those extensions in so in here. yeah another thing is too these uh these balance things only um uh, they have two windows in them uh and you gotta make sure one of them is lined up with the tire valve in there so you have access to it i know some people have had problems with these extensions uh leaking uh i imagine you got to follow the instructions for one thing is uh, this connection here you're supposed to put a little bit of something to lubricate the little rubber um it's not an o-ring it's just a rubber little like a little flat washer but uh, you shouldn't put those on dry something to lubricate that as it seals and make sure it's on the whole way uh, another thing i found out is this is actually going to rub uh, this metal piece here and i was looking for a piece of uh, old heater hose uh, to slide over top of this and then uh, that would protect that would protect that uh but i can't find it i was sure i had a little piece left over uh, from a job but i can actually slide that on later uh, i will 
I will pick up some a little bit of heater hose uh, when I'm in town next. But for um, for the moment, I'm just gonna stick a little piece of old rubber inner tube in there. Not yeah, you know, this does not feel sharp. You know, it's not sharp at all. But uh, better safe than sorry. Uh, we'll take a little precaution there. So I'll be all right for the time being. All right, just got a couple started for now. There we go. Come on, get on there. All right. All right. Some of these holes are bigger than others. Uh, I mean, just on the wheel cover thing. So I think they're so that. Did I pick the wrong ones? <laughs> so that you can get a couple started and the holes are big enough that'll go over the lug nuts. And I may have picked, I may have picked the wrong ones. I did, I should have put it up here. And that one should have been up here. I did that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll make this easy. I just put the top one in. <laughs> that, it, these tend to lean out, so it'll, it'll draw that up nice. And uh, I'm sure I got it right this time. All right, now I can just go ahead and put it on. I almost forgot the, uh, uh, this hardware. This is supposed to clamp on the outer wheel, and then uh, you know, the hose goes through this loop, and uh, that keeps it uh, kind of centered in the, the hole through the wheel cover. So i got to put that on the outer wheel, tighten that bolt down, and uh, with the hose through there. So we'll get that done. Okay, here's that tire pressure monitoring, monitoring system. And it goes from left to right on the vehicle. Um, one and two is the front, so driver side, passenger side. And then the, across the rear, let me get number three over here. Uh, kind of same thing on the driver side, outer, inner, then passenger side, inner, outer. So I, uh, I still have the uh, driver side to do in the back. So these will be number, yeah, number five and six are the ones that need to go on the, the wheel that I'm working on now. So these just get screwed on to the valve stem. And then there's a actually a lock nut. It goes on first, and then you screw that on until it uh till it just stops. And same thing, that little rubber um that little rubber flat washer on there that seals it. That it needs something to lubricate that just a little bit. Uh, use it very, very sparingly. And then uh once that's screwed on. Then back the lock nut up till it comes in contact with that and snug it so that uh, you know, this would you know work its way off somehow. So and this is the display. I'll we'll have to get that out and uh, we'll get to that. Okay, this turned out pretty good. There's the uh, where is it? I don't know if you can see that or not. It's in there though. There it is, and a little lock nut behind it. So that's actually the outer one, the outer wheel that points in. And the inner wheel that uh, points out. I had to put that little, uh, yeah, I had to put that little uh, clamp thing in there. Hose goes through there nice. Uh, this isn't, uh, you know, rubbing up against here. Uh, this monitor is on. Lock nuts on it. So there we go. That'd be so much easier um, adding air if I need to. Uh, and with these, I'll, I'll know if they're uh, getting low. Hopefully, there's no leaks with any of these. Nothing's uh, faulty. Or a defective product that I don't have any problems with leaks, but uh, yeah, well, see what goes on here. And I uh, put these all on with the impact, uh, you know, run them all around there. But uh, you know, this this impact's probably not you know, a lot of uh, older era impacts are not as uh, strong as not as strong as you might might think. Yeah, you know, maybe for a little car, it's uh, probably make maybe makes them tighter than they need to be. But on something like this, uh, they they're not tight enough. So I'll have to go around there with my torque wrench and uh, you know, torque all these to 170 foot-pounds is what the uh, uh, the bounder spec is. And uh, So that's it. Three out of four wheels are done. I'm going to get the other side taken care of and uh, we'll, we'll get back on here. Okay, I have the other side done and I'm using the, uh, you know, the remote to bring all the jacks back up. All right, the rear's all the way up. Let's make sure the fronts are up. Yeah, okay. So she's all back on all four again. Now, I need to get that uh, display that, uh, for those uh, tire pressure 
monitoring system. <laughs> now, I don't know if they're all going to read right off the bat. They may all come online right away. And, but I think I've read somewhere because I do, I do check reviews on stuff that uh, you actually have to, by design, actually you're supposed to take it for a, take it for a ride and that kind of activates activates all, the ball but yeah in the reviews it said i think like five out of six you know they all came right on right away but it wasn't until somebody uh you know that person had took it for a ride that they all came on so let me see what we got here uh it does have a, a little solar panel on top so if it's on your dashboard it uh, automatically recharge or there's a little uh you know port there for charging but in the uh, menu the setting yeah, so I don't know if it comes in PSI by default or bar. Uh, oops. <laughs> there we go. Let's drop it right off the bat. Let's see how we turn this thing on. Maybe if we... Maybe, uh... I don't know how to turn it on. Maybe push and hold the set. Maybe it doesn't come charged. May have to plug it in. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. Well, it did come on and it's beeping. Uh, looks like it's already set for PSI, so that's good. I might not have to do anything with it. And it's set. Uh, yeah, the top reading that's uh, front left, front right. You know, outer and inner left, inner and outer right. So it may just do that until I uh, take it for a ride. I'm guessing, or maybe I left it. Let me hit the set button again. At least it quit beeping. It's flashing though. Yeah, I think it wants to go for a ride. So I'm just gonna leave that be here and get uh, get things ready. Well, I've got everything put away. There's no awnings out. All the blocks are out. She's down on her, down on her feet again. And the uh, bell's in there. Says, "Yeah, I'm, I'm ready." So I think I got all, everything all put away. I think first thing I need to do, because I was working, working on the brakes, is go in and make sure I, you know, pump them up. Uh, make sure I have a good brake pedal. Uh, that happens when you do brakes. Got to pump, got to pump them up before you go. Just putting it in gear and taking off. All right, I think all systems go here. Let's see how Betty's feeling today. There, the automatic steps come in. All right. So these are still blinking. I think. Uh, see what happens when we get this thing rolling. I think in those sensors, there's a you know centrifugal force uh, activates something, but it knows to take a reading. And uh, oh yeah, we have the backup camera all mounted in the back. Put that in here. I think I already showed that to you. Let's turn that on. One, two, three, come back. I turn my. Uh, I turn my parking lights on. What's wrong here? All right, there we go. All right, backup camera works. Tower pressure monitoring system. Letting Betty warm up for just a minute. There she's idling down. Beautiful day. pumps oh yeah about that yeah, feels better after just about two or three I can feel it first one was a little soft but second one better yeah we're good let's uh let's back her up here oh yeah 
Yep, she stops. Yeah, we're good. All right, I'm gonna shut this off for just a minute. All right, we're gonna pull over right here. Nice little turnaround spot. See how things are going. And we get backed up here and spun the right way. See what Bella thinks about all this. All right, we're looking good there. And you got some backup camera going on. All right, just gonna pull over here. We're out of the, just off the lanes here. What we got going on here? Uh oh. Now the front ones are about right. I got 70, 75 pounds. I should have. I didn't take the time to uh, just fine tune those before I put them on. That's and this one, one, this inside one is not registering. Oh no. So I run the back ones like 70 to 75, and the back ones are yeah uh, you know, yeah about 85 or 90, and uh, those are all looking good except for this one. Oh man, I hope uh, I hope we don't have a defective one. Oh boy. Huh. Yeah, I really don't want to take those back off and return them. That's not that big of a deal. I will if I have to. Alright, let's get back and see if it decided to cooperate or not. We're back and the good news is it came online. There it is. We got uh what's the latest? Um up front. 73 and 70. Um that's fine. I'm you know, I like to stay within five pounds of each other. 73 and I like 70 to 75 up front. We're gonna say that's okay. And uh about 90, I like 90, 95 in the back. Just because I did have the bounder weighed. Or no no no, it is 80. No, that's correct. It's 85 to 90. 85 is my target, and uh, it um, so I run 85 to 90. Those backs are all in spec, uh, in the, the fronts 70 to 75. I mean, they're, they're good, they're, they're I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I like it, and I think I can go to the menu and actually set um, you know, a low pressure and high pressure alarm. So, you know, if one drops below, say, five or ten pounds lower. You know, um, it'll it'll uh, set off an alarm and let me know, alert me alert me to it. So I, th I think those measure temperature too, although that wouldn't uh, that doesn't do real good on those inside tires that I put the extensions on. So all right, I guess we're done with the. Uh, I didn't need the backup camera really, uh, but it's nice to have. It actually would have saved me uh, an incident I had. <laughs> Maybe I'll uh, start learning to use it in different situations. All right, what else is going on uh, with the bounder? I have been looking at some uh, awnings. I'm probably going to replace. I, I might go ahead just go ahead and replace all the awnings on it too. I, I know some of you uh, will say, "What are you putting all this money and work into it if you're selling it?" Well, I don't know. What do you do when you when you have a house and you're a homeowner? You know, you let things go and it needs a bunch of stuff and it's kind of the cost. There's a cost to keeping things, you know, nice and up, up to date. And, uh, you know, if I let this go and that go and, uh, you know, that decrease the value of the bounder. And I mean, there's plenty of, there's plenty of motorhomes out there that are, uh, price is pretty low. And you got to wonder why and it's because you know, they need a bunch of things. And I, um, you know the bounder could sell tomorrow or next week next month next year i i don't know but for, for right now i'm going to continue using it i like to keep it up i like to uh have it ready to go and healthy and uh, i like things a certain way so uh it's the cost of maintaining it and it should hold its value uh pretty well in, in the used rv market I'm gonna put betty back in this spot for now uh i got a couple things to do i want to wrap up with a van and get it because this could be sitting all winter uh 
couple things put away and just uh, take it care of. So, yeah, the, the brakes feel great. The, the tire pressure monitoring system is up and running. I really like having that. What else? Um, I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna wrap it up here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Cold weather is just. You, know, you look at the forecast each week. It's it's down a little. It's still beautiful right now. About 72 today. Sunny, clear sky. But like next week, like in two weeks, that it's like a high of 60. Two more weeks, it's a you know 50-ish in a little bit, and it's it's. We're at the end of the nice weather. So I'm, I'm enjoying it and uh, I, it's, it's beautiful. But it's, uh, it's going away soon. And speaking of going away, all right, I'll see you next time.